Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to my 24, 2024 predictions. I have very little confidence that many of these predictions will come to fruition. So look at this exercise as just a bit of fun. And so at the end of 2024, we can come back and laugh at my crappy predictions uh, because the majority of these will not uh, come to fruition, will not come off. Now, I have been umming and ahhing about whether I should be bearish or bullish in regards to my economic and stock market predictions for this year. Initially, I was a little bit bearish, and then I was extremely bullish, and now I'm a little bit more bearish. And the main reason I'm a little bit more bearish is just because of some of the economic indicators are suggesting that there is a high chance that the United States will go into recession. We're talking about GDI, which is not GDP, but GDP is going up. GDI is actually now negative, and that's actually a sign that the American economy is in trouble. Uh, of course, the yield curve inversion, uh, uh, leading economic indicators, LEI, that's highly negative. The only positive leading economic activity is the stock market. So in a way, the stock market is pricing a little bit too much optimism right now. And that ha does have me a little bit worried. But on the flip side, and the reason why I was thinking of uh, predicting a little bit more bullishness is because of the possibility that this time is different. Now, those are this time is different. Those are the more foremost, I wouldn't say damaging words, but whenever you think this time is different, you're going to be bitten hard. Uh, you're going to uh, realize that whenever you think that this time is different, it's always going to be wrong because again, history doesn't repeat, but it often doesn't, often does rhyme. Now, one of the reasons why I think this time could be different is simply because of the labor market. The labor market is changing and it's going to continue to change over the next few decades because we're just not having enough children and babies. So labor market is going to change and the possibility that already we are seeing that we don't have enough people for all the jobs out there. We're definitely seeing that in Australia right now, even though they have increased immigration. So I think just potentially the labor market could really help us not to go into recession in many of the Western countries, particularly America and Australia. Of course, in Australia, over the last few decades, we've been helped by uh, China and iron ore prices, and I'm actually a little bit more bullish on iron ore. So let's get into my 24 predictions. This is not only on the economy, on the stock market. I'm talking about predictions in terms of who's going to win major sporting competitions, uh, some of these sporting competitions change from year to year because we're talking about World Cups, which is only every four years, depending on what sport you um, you follow. Uh, we do have Euro 2024. We have the Asian Cup. Uh, we have the Olympics this year, which I actually didn't realize. I believe it's in Paris. Uh, I won't tell you who's going to win the events in the Olympics, but I'll give you how many gold medals I think Australia will win. And to be honest with you, I just put out any random number. Uh, but first, let's start off with some important economic indicators, starting off with interest rates. Uh, I think there's a possibility that interest rates won't fall this year in Australia, particularly if inflation remains a bit stubborn. But I think by the end of the year, uh, interest rates will fall from 4.35% to 3.25%. One of the reasons why interest rates might fall significantly, particularly towards the end of the year, is because of a really weak economy. Uh, we are in a per capita recession right now. So uh, GDP per capita is actually falling right now. And if we do limit immigration, as and that's what the government is talking about, I think there is a potential. We might see GDP fall, uh, maybe in one quarter, maybe even two quarters, and that would mean we're in a recession. Who knows? I don't know about that, but I think there is potential that interest rates will fall. And that's not ne necessarily good for the stock market. People don't understand this. Just because interest rates fall is not necessarily good for the stock market. We have seen this time and time again in the past when interest rates drop significantly over a short period of time. It's usually because we're in a recession and at the same time, the stock market drops significantly. And I think that's one of the reasons why the stock market is being a little bit, I wouldn't say confused right now, but I'd say a little bit more overly bullish right now is because they're pricing in interest rates drops and they think there's a correlation between interest rates dropping and the stock market going on a run. Uh, I think that is a wrong way to look at it. There's also the opposite side that interest rates are falling because of a really weak economy, which is not necessarily going to be good for the stock market. So interest rates 3.25%. I've changed that a lot. So initially it was 4%. 
and I brought it down to 3.25%. Again, no idea. Next, inflation. Is inflation going to be stubborn this year or will we see it drop significantly? I put in a 2.8%. So sort of within the range that the Reserve Bank wants to see it, I think there is a possibility, particularly if uh, the central banks drop interest rates too quickly, that we might see another round of inflation, uh, exactly what we saw in the 1970s. So again, 2.8%. And that's, again, another number I've dropped. Uh, I've dropped that a little bit from my first go at these predictions. I think it, my previous one was 3.8%, now 2.8%, because a little bit more bearish in this uh, edition, edition. And maybe if I did this video on January the 3rd, I'd be a lot more bullish and some of these numbers would be a little bit higher. GDP growth. I definitely changed this one because I went from it being positive 2.8% to be negative 1.8%. Uh, so that bully or that bearishness has really changed my opinion. And again, if I was doing this video a few days after I've recorded it, say the January 2nd, maybe I'd say GDP growth was going to be positive again. So again, I'm just being a little bit more bearish here. More than likely, I'm going to be completely wrong, but that's okay. And the main reason I've become a little bit more bearish again, bearishness, bearish, is because of some of these economic indicators that are screaming right now, recession. But again, one year ago, they were screaming a recession too. Nothing happened. Uh, ASX XGO. So the first time I did this, I put the XGO above 8,000. Then I had a look at it and went, mm, I don't know about that. Whew. So now I've gone 6,222. So it's going to be a bad year for the XGO. It's going to be falling because possible recession. It might even fall below 6,000. So I've gone from 8,000 to 6,022. So this just shows you that sometimes... Uh, how you're feeling at one point in time can mean dramatic differences in what you're predicting because predicting is hard. Who knows? Uh, so next year, it could be anywhere between 8,000 and 6,000, maybe even 8,000 and 5,000 by the end of 2024. NASDAQ, there's another one I changed up quite a bit. So NASDAQ was up big in 2023. And typically, if an index is up big one year, you won't, get, you won't see that sort of rise the next year. Uh, so I'm thinking a change of 21%. Is that up or down? Down 21%. So not a good year for the NASDAQ. Now I am hoping I am wrong. I'm hoping I'm completely wrong. And I'm hoping I was um, didn't change these because my original forecast for NASDAQ was up about 25%. Uh, so a fairly big change in the NASDAQ. A Bitcoin. Well, we go from me being bearish to me being a little bit more bullish. So I think this could be a really good year for Bitcoin and gold, particularly if we see other asset classes fall like a rock. If we go into recession and possibly Bitcoin could exceed 100,000. In fact, I'm saying Bitcoin could go above 150,000. So last year I said, um, I predicted that Bitcoin would breach or go below 10,000. I was completely wrong then. So more than likely, I'm going to be completely wrong here. And maybe this is the year Bitcoin goes back below 10,000. But at this point in time, Bitcoin's chart looking pretty good. It's looking pretty nice. Gold. Well, I've already said that I'm bullish on Bitcoin and I'm bullish on gold. Record highs this year, 3,025. Yes, it's going to get above 3,000. And I do have a few gold plays right now. Uh, I do know a few, a few other viewers of this channel are a little bit bullish on gold. I wouldn't even be against uh, playing silver. There's a really good silver company called Adriatic Metals. Uh, the share price of Adriatic Metals has gone like a rocket the last few weeks. I was looking at that thinking, oh, this could be a good buy. And then it's just share price has gone bananas. And that should be going to production soonish, I believe, if I remember correctly. So bullish on gold, bullish on Bitcoin. Now on to share prices of individual companies. I'm not sure why I chose these companies, but I've stuck with these. CBA, CSL, Tesla, Core Lithium, and A2 Milk. And because I think the market's going to go down, of course, most of these are going to go down. CBA, 75.41. If that could be towards the levels where I'd possibly think about buying CBA. Definitely, if it goes below 60, I would definitely buy CBA. Uh, that would be a really good valuation levels for that company. CSL, 258.52. I don't think it's going to be affected that much. In fact, we'll talk about what sector I think was going to or is going to be the best performing sector in 2024 and CSL fits within that sector. So I've already given away that prediction. Tesla dropping a little bit 
down 176. I believe it's 250, something like that right now. Core lithium, I dropped that significantly. When I first did my predictions, I had that at 60 cents. Now I think it's about 21 cents, a little bit more weakness in the lithium. And A2 milk, I had it rebounding this year, but 338. So that's not much difference from what it is now. I think it's above $4 now, but uh, just because of the overall weakness in the market, A2 milk going down for this year. I wouldn't even, yeah, I wouldn't. If anyone buys or sells these companies because of these predictions, you are silly. That's what I'm going to say because uh, I didn't put much time or thought into these. Again, this is just for fun. This exercise is just for fun because we're predicting or trying to predict the future and we are going to be wrong when we do that. Alibaba. Okay. So Alibaba, there is an argument. This company is really, 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 really cheap right now, particularly because it's been growing over the last five years. Now, I believe the revenue growth did drop in the last year. And I think this is also what your feelings on China are for the year. But I think Alibaba is going to go up this year by 38%. 38%. I have been thinking about taking a position, a trading position in Alibaba. Uh, and we'll wait and see. I don't know. Um, I am also wary of China. Because who knows? China, the government there could just say, well, we're going to nationalize Alibaba and that's it. And shareholders are screwed. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's always a possibility. Uh, best sector, I've already given this away. I originally went with Infotech because I thought we're going to have another good year and now going, going healthcare. I picked healthcare for 2023. It was nowhere near the best performing sector Infotech was, but I'm going back to healthcare. I think healthcare has had a few bad years. This year is the year for healthcare companies on the ASX. Uh, IPOs. A lean year, or maybe even two lean years on uh, the ASX in terms of IPOs. I think I said 33 to 35. Someone else said about 40, so I was maybe a little bit short of, uh, I just counted all the APOs I, I found on a website. Uh, and originally, because I thought this was going to be a good year, all this thinking that the economy is turning around, going, you know, be growing significantly this year, I originally went with 144. Now I'm going to 44. So I just dropped the one. Uh, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Iron ore. Okay, so originally I was really bullish on iron ore. I was going for $135 a ton and then a little bit more bearish now, but still $115 a ton. So I think iron ore companies are still do fairly well. Now, if iron ore, there is an argument, if iron ore stays at these prices, Australia won't go into recession. And I will understand, and I actually could believe in that sort of prediction uh, but if iron ore does fall below, say, $90 a tonne, I think there's a better chance Australia will go into recession. We are still highly reliant on iron ore prices and still too high reliant on China. Petrol at the pump. Actually, it didn't change. This is one of the ones I didn't change. I've gone with $2.31. And so we'll say that's a sort of in the middle range of the pricing cycle. I think there is a chance that oil could have a good year this year. Now, that's counter to what you would think if economies are in a recession. You would think there's less demand for oil, that sort of thing, and oil prices should fall. So there's that, there is that possibility that oil prices will fall. And maybe we might see oil prices down or petrol at the pump down to, say, $1.50 at the bottom of the cycle. Maybe even at the top of the cycle, that will be really, really good. So this is one I think I will be wrong on. Recession is USA. So last year, I went counter to the market. 100% of economists said Australia, US and United States would go into recession in 2023. They were wrong. Now it's 50-50. I'm saying, yes, USA will go into recession in 2024. So I'm just looking at some of the economic indicators. But again, I think maybe this time is different. So originally I was going no here, but now I've changed my opinion to yes. I watch this space. I haven't changed watch this space all that much. So these are more long-term thematics, which I think will shape the way humanity is within the next few decades. First one is human redundancy. Uh, and I think this becomes more apparent within the next 10 years that we've got to question, what's our purpose? What are we doing? And the whole reason we're going to question our purpose, sort of like a philosophical discussion humanity is going to have. What is whole purpose being on this planet? And that's because of AI, which is, should have came in at number two. Um, and AI could drive the way we move forward. 
And I think also human redundancy and AI will drive space exploration to the next level. Um, that's something I am really looking forward to. And anti-aging is something else that I think is going to be increasingly important over the next decade. And one of the main reasons behind that is because we're just not having children right now. And I think, this is just the way I think, that eventually governments will increase the retirement age. So people will be working longer and to really solve the problem of people be when they get older, they just don't want to not want to work, but they just don't have the ability to work. And anti-aging can fix that. Um, yeah, so these are more long-term thematics. Maybe not this year, but definitely AI, automation have been stories in 2023. Uh, we really I haven't really been hearing about human redundancy, but I think that's going to be increasingly talked about issue over the next decade. Uh, now we're going on to sports competitions, uh, NRL and AFL. It's going to be Brisbane themed, Brisbane Broncos and Brisbane Lions. I think both these teams lost their premierships this year, so they'll go one better in 2024. Now, not being a fan of any of these teams and living in Brisbane, it's going to be horrible being in Brisbane in September, early October. Um, I am hoping I will be completely wrong with these predictions I believe, or what? Well, I want Parramatta Eels to win, and I, to be honest with you, I couldn't care less who wins the AFL, just as long as it's not Brisbane Lions or Sydney Swans. Uh, anyone else could win that, uh, but I definitely don't want Brisbane Broncos to win, and I don't even want Brisbane Lions to win because, to be honest with you, I just don't want any teams in Brisbane to win. I want people, you know, in this town, this city, who support these teams to suffer, like I've been suffering as a supporter of Parramatta Eels over the last thirty-seven years. Uh, Super Bowl. Baltimore Ravens. I probably would have gone with 49ers and then Baltimore Ravens kicked 49ers ass the other day. Uh, more than likely, Baltimore Ravens won't win. I think maybe they've hit the peak too soon. I should have picked Buffalo Bills. I think there's a good chance Buffalo Bills goes on a run now. Uh, a pretty good run, but I just don't trust that team just yet. That is a team I support in the NFL. Um, I wouldn't mind if 49ers win. There's a few players I like on that team. Uh, who else could win? Dallas Cowboys, nah. Uh, Eagles, nah, maybe. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs look like they are weaker this year. Uh, Buffalo Bills look okay. Who else? I think that's about it. I think, or Mo the Miami Dolphins. That is another team. So Baltimore plays Mo Miami Dolphins this weekend before I'm recording, so in a few days' time. And I think if Miami Dolphins, pro that they're playing at Baltimore, if they can beat Baltimore... Maybe I would have I would change my pick to Miami Dolphins, and I'm pretty sure Miami Dolphins have never won the Super Bowl. Uh, NBA last year I picked Boston Celtics. I'm pretty sure I did, and I'm going to pick this team again. If it's not the Celtics, uh, more than likely it's going to be like uh, Milwaukee. Uh, if it's not Milwaukee or the Boston, maybe um, one of the Western teams. Who would be Denver Nuggets? Could do it again. Uh, Minnesota doing really well, and. My Dark Horse team is the team I support, OKC Thunder. Uh, I'm not going to pick them in this because that's just picking who you support. I, I would have thought at the beginning of the year they were a few years from becoming real contenders, but I think possibly they could be contenders this year, but I'm thinking more likely next year or even the year after. So look out for the OKC Thunder, and I just like that team. I lived near Oklahoma City for a few years, and I just like the name. They're, they're you know, Thunder. Thunder. I'm a big storm person. Not Melbourne storm, a thunderstorm person. NHL and Major League Baseball. NHL, I'm going for the Vancouver Canucks. I actually did that in this is the Stanley Cup, NHL. The last time a Canadian team won the Stanley Cup, I believe it was 1993. Uh, Canadian team has lost the Stanley Cup about four or five times since then. And for those who don't know, uh, ice hockey is massive, huge in Canada, and they have not had a team win since 1993. I could be mistaken there. Uh, and so I just wish for Canadian people that they won because it's a shame that American teams, United States teams, kept winning. Winning Because to be honest with you, NHL is not that big in the United States. And some of the teams that are winning the NHL are like in Tampa Bay, Dallas. They don't care about ice hockey down there. It's ridiculous. Uh, so I really hope a Canadian team wins, and I just picked one random team in Vancouver Canucks, and I actually like that um, logo as well. And the logo I don't really like is the LA Dodgers, and the only reason I picked the uh, LA Dodgers is because 
they are shelling out for some big names. Uh, that $1 billion contract for that Japanese uh, pitcher and hitter, um, which was that contract was ridiculous in itself. They're not going to pay him much over the next 10 years, but after he retires, they're going to pay him more the money. So it was a deterred, de deferred contract or something like that. And they've just signed another Japanese player. So baseball is massive in Japan, which I didn't realize until I lived in Japan for a while. Um, Chiba, I lived near Chiba. And when I moved to and living in Japan, Chiba, they actually won the baseball competition in Japan. So the only reason I picked um, LA Dodgers is simply because of the purchases they made this year. And to be honest with you, I didn't want to pick them, but I just thought it's probably the best likelihood, most likely team to win. Okay, Asian Cup. I couldn't pick the um, the Socceroos, so I just picked the team most likely to win, in my opinion. That's Japan. That's sort of an easy one. Interesting logo. Japan Federation Authority. Japan Football Association. Federation Authority. Japan Japanese Football Association with an interesting bird. It looks like a raven or a crow. Holding a football. Uh, UEFA Euro 2024. I've gone with, I'm pretty sure this is the, t the country hosting it. Just gone with Germany. I could not pick the favourites, which is England. I will never pick England for any competition whatsoever. Uh, never, never, never pick England. I've just gone with Germany. I uh, wouldn't mind Germany winning it, uh, Spain winning it, uh, Netherlands, any team except England and France. I'll be happy with winning the UEFA, UEFA Euro 2024. Uh, the ICC T20 World Cup. So we had a, the one-day World Cup this year. Now we've got the, in 2023, now we've got the T20 World Cup in the United States and the Caribbean or West Indies. I was looking at who I should pick. Again, I'm not going to pick India. I picked them for the one-day World Cup, which I thought was a good pick, and then Australia beat them. Never going to pick England. So I decided just go with the mo next most likely um, choice, and that's Australia. More than likely, they won't win. If Australia doesn't win, I really hope New Zealand wins. They haven't won anything in cricket. They've been very close. I know they are our, you know, one of our rivals, but I have a soft spot for uh, for New Zealand in most sporting competitions, uh, except rugby union. Yeah. No. Uh, how many gold medals will Australia win in 2024 Paris? I just picked one number at random, and that number is 14. It would be amazing if we do win 14. It would be just a fluke if I got this right. I'm not even sure who, I know we should do fairly well in swimming, but other than swimming, I have no idea. Next, USA president. I could not choose Donald Trump. He's the favorite right now. Um, not a big favorite over Joe Biden, but I'm hoping, we just saw, my, my, I was going to say Miami. We just saw Maine um, announce that uh, Donald Trump can't be on their electorate thingy, whatever you call it. Uh, because of his role in the in in the January 6th insurrection. I believe, I don't understand why any American could even support Donald Trump because he is the very definition of a traitor, that he will had a role in that insurrection. That's the very definition of a traitor, but yet, yet a lot of people support him. And if it's not uh, Donald Trump as a Republican, Republican nominee, I hope it's not DeSantis because I really dislike him. And the next in line is Nikki Haley. In fact, she's second in line to become the, the Republican nominee. And I actually don't mind her, Nikki Haley. Uh, so her background is interesting. She is um, Pakistani. I think her parents was Pakistani. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm hoping she gets nominated. And to be honest with you, I was really disappointed with the last two nominees. Biden and Trump are way too old. We've got to get away, away from the white old male. And Nikki Haley is against that. Uh, what's her name? Kamala Harris. She's next in line, I think, for the, for the uh, Democrats. But um, hopefully it's not Donald Trump. That's I think that's going to be a massive mistake if uh, uh, they get... He's, he's the next president. I think the world's in turmoil. Okay, the biggest film. So last year I picked the biggest TV show and then I realized at the end of the year that it's really hard to know what the biggest TV show of the year was, but it's not hard to know what the biggest film of the year was because we have box office. I hope the biggest film of the year is June part two, but it's a little bit too sophisticated for the normal, the normal uh, movie watcher. So I think Deadpool three, another stupid 
um, sequel. I'm not saying Deadpool's stupid, but there's just too many sequels. I'm getting sick with the movie industry right now. If you have a look at all the movies being released this year, even the last few years, it's just sequel after sequel. I want new content. Hollywood, I haven't been to the movie theater for like five years. It's just not new content. I understand why they do sequels because people already understand, pretty already know like Deadpool. They already know Marvels. They already know all that. But please come out with new contact Hollywood. Uh, so Deadpool 3, have, there's, there's a few other uh, movies that I think could be the best in, like I had no idea that Barbie was going to be the best film in 2023. And that's also ridiculous. Barbie, it was a Look, I think Barbie, the movie, was completely overrated. That's my opinion. And that's it for 2024 predictions. 24, yes, 24. Uh, more than likely, I'll be completely wrong in most of these. If I'm right in two or three of these, I am going to brag like anything else at the end of 2024. So what are your 2024 predictions? Uh, you can give me as many as 24 if you want. So leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, I'm not even a, any sort of advisor. So don't take any of these predictions. I am no sport guru. So don't uh, go to the betting market and put bets on any of these um, teams that I did predict that were going to win their sporting competitions. Uh, if you can bet on what the best or biggest box office movie of these is going to be, don't put it on Deadpool 3 just because I chose it. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm not a financial advisor, not an economic advisor, even though I do have an economics degree. Uh, so uh, make sure you find out, find someone who can advise you, who is qualified uh, and suits your own financial needs. That's it for this video. And that's it for, when am I going to release this? So that's it. I'm releasing this video on the 31st of December. I'm not recording it on the 31st of December. And that's it for 2023. Have a great 2024. And that's it. See you later. Bye.